This is Chapter 23 of Hattie Big Sky by Kirby Larson. December 12, 1918 Dear Charlie, when you get to Wolf Point, stop in and see Mr. Ebgard. He has offered to drive you down to that spot I wrote you from so often, three miles north and west of Vita, Montana. He has the most stylish new Luverne automobile, so I would accept his offer if I were you. I wish you could have seen my acres in the spring, all green fuzz creeping along the prairie, or in late summer when the flax turned the fields deep sea blue. Maybe, just maybe, if you stand on the steps of my home, if Traft hasn't carted it away so that his tipped M cows can run free, you will catch loose memories on the breeze. Listen, do you hear Chase rescuing me from the pump handle? Maddie scolding Muley for tearing her new dress? Leafy nursing this neighbor or that? Do you hear Rose and June cackling in Rooster Jim's yard? Paralee's angel voice soaring above the mishmash of voices at the Vita church? It won't take you long, standing there, to understand what I mean about that sky. The endless and aloof Montana sky. I have to laugh at myself, already looking at that time through rose-colored glasses. Don't think I could ever forget the smutchy odor of a burned barn, or the vinegary scent of fear of folks born in the wrong country or the achingly clean perfume of paraffin-dipped crepe paper flowers. The blessing is that these heartbreaks are but a few of the patches in my prairie year quilt. You asked me an important question, one I can't answer yet. Perhaps you could step off the train at Great Falls. I can't say that I'd be disappointed to have dinner together. That would be nice. My only plans now are to work at Brown's until my debts are repaid. Though I should feel a total failure, my time on the prairie has branded this hope on my heart. Next year, it will be better. My new job didn't allow pets, but there were no complaints from Mr. Whiskers about that. He'd made it clear he was in Vita to stay. At least one of us had found a home and Leafy was pleased as punch for the company. It's going to be lonely around here, what with both you and Paralee gone. She shook her head. I'll be able to slice up the quiet and serve it on toast. I handed over Mr. Whiskers' travel case. Not that he'll need it anymore, I said, but he likes to curl up in it once in a while on a cold night. I tried not to think about all the nights he'd kept me warm. Rooster Jim welcomed Albert, June, and Rose back to the fold. Martha had quit laying. She'd been the main dish at my farewell party. Though I'd auctioned off most everything else, I gave plug to Elmer Wren Jr. I didn't want anyone to see me off at the station. I'd arrived alone and wanted to leave that way. Settling myself on the train seat, I couldn't help but smile. My traveling companions could have passed for the twins of those with whom I'd ridden out to Montana. Now, the rough ways and clothes seemed cozy and familiar. And, I had to admit, that fat man had been right. There was too much promise of eastern Montana. She gave all she could, but she couldn't support so many homesteaders. Honyockers. That's what he'd called us, and that's what we were. The train left the station with a jolt. A letter crinkled in my skirt pocket. I'd nearly memorized it. The Boeing Airplane Company is looking for mechanics, and I happen to know a good one. Me, Charlie had written. Maybe we will both end up in Seattle. I leaned my head back against the seat and closed my eyes. So much had happened in one year's time. Now here I was, headed to Great Falls. What next? I didn't know. I wanted to keep writing. Paralee's last letter had noted that there was already one woman reporter at the Seattle Times newspaper. 
Maybe there was room for two. The train lurched over a patch of rough tracks, jarring me out of my wool gathering. Outside, the blue Montana sky stretched forever. Come to think of it, Montana had kept her promise. I did find a home in my year on the prairie. I found one in my own skin and in the hearts of the people I met. Leafy had been amazed at all that I packed up to take with me. Do you need all them books? She'd asked. But there was one thing I'd left behind. Hattie here and there. I wasn't going to miss her. Not one bit. I settled myself in and faced west.